Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From curious bees to hammerhead sharks, here are 10 animals that have been found living inside volcanoes. Who knew? Number 10. Bees Of course, bees are usually found flying around gardens and fields of flowers in their search for pollen, but there's one species of bee that has been found to be living in the last place you'd expect on the edge of a volcano. And it wasn't just by chance, either. During an expedition to the Masaya volcano near the Nicaraguan capital of Managua, scientists found a small species of bee called Anthophora squamulosa, which was burrowing within piles of volcanic ash. The bees that were discovered were only living in one particular part of the volcano, where temperatures reach as high as 107 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's acid rain as a result of the sulfur dioxide fumes emitted by the volcano. The strange thing is that there's no vegetation around, so it was unclear why the bees have made this place their home. With a population estimated to be between 1 and 2,000, they are a solitary species that dig cell-like nests into the ash where they lay their eggs. It was found that more than 99% of the pollen the bees were feeding their larvae came from only one type of plant, the Melanthera nivea, a type of wildflower that can withstand the acidic conditions in the region. Number 9. Larval Fish In 2015, an Australian research vessel was investigating undersea volcanoes off the coast of the continent and found a horrifying-looking fish that was living there. Known as a scaleless blackfish, it has translucent fangs and no scales. Scientists have struggled to identify the exact species, although some believe it to be an adult snaggletooth dragonfish. A number of other species were also discovered, which were far more familiar and identified as larval fish. Various species are farmed in ocean nurseries and occasionally are swept out into open sea. Farmers believe that they were lost forever, but it turns out that the warm, acidic waters near undersea volcanoes provide the ideal environment for them to thrive. The researchers found dolphinfish, flying grenard, tail kingies, eels, and flatfish which proves that the regions around volcanoes can support ecosystems in a way that was previously thought to be impossible. And now for number eight. But first, I'm very sorry about my voice today. I'm getting over a sinus infection, but didn't want to leave you without a video. Thanks for your patience. I know you've all been there. Number eight, Yeti crabs. The ocean floor is littered with hydrothermal vents, which are chimneys that release water and minerals that have been heated to as much as 700 degrees Fahrenheit by volcanic activity below. They are inhospitable places, but a survey in the waters near Antarctica found an unusual animal living in and around them. Known as Antarctic Yeti crabs, they are a type of squat lobster called kiwidae that live in hot water. Investigators have found up to 700 specimens per square meter in the harsh environment, so many that the entire vent and floor surrounding it is completely covered with them. The crabs have a distinct shape and are covered in bristles called setae, which give a fur-like appearance. Colonies of bacteria grow within these setae in a symbiotic relationship. The crabs themselves can grow to up to two inches in length, so not very big, and feed on the bacteria clusters that live on the hydrothermal vent chimneys. The lives of Yeti crabs are almost entirely spent in the same place because, especially in places like Antarctica, there's such a massive difference in water temperature away from the vents. This means they can't even move to nearby ones because they wouldn't survive the journey. The only exception to this is the females when they lay their eggs, who move into slightly cooler waters where their larvae are able to grow. Number 7. Venus's hair. The Tagoro volcano, which lies under the ocean near the Canary Islands, erupted in 2012 and reshaped three and a half square miles of the sea floor. Two years later, a team of researchers visited the site to take samples and were very surprised by what they found. It soon became clear that the region was covered in long white filaments, which are now called Venus's hair, named after Botticelli's painting of the goddess Venus emerging from the sea. Nice visual, right? These are actually colonies of bacteria which grow together to form the structures and make use of the newly settled nutrients in the seabed. The question researchers are trying to understand is when the bacteria arrived and where they came from in the first place. It's thought that they could have only started living there after the water temperature dropped enough and just so happened to be present to begin to grow when it became possible to do so. With every drop of seawater containing countless varieties of bacteria, it's thought that these fields of Venus's hair are what the ocean bed of the early Earth was like because there was so much more volcanic activity back then. Number 6. Tube worms. Not all volcanoes spew out molten hot lava, and in the Arctic Ocean, there's another type called mud volcanoes that release hot mud as well as methane gas. 
This environment would, of course, be inhospitable to most animals, but studies have found them to be home to billions of tiny worms. These tube worms that were found in the Beaufort Sea existed in huge colonies and each grows to about three inches long, much less than their deep sea cousins that are found around hydrothermal vents that can be as long as 80 inches. They don't need light to survive and are able to withstand extreme pressures and temperatures in water that's full of acid and toxic gases. The environment is so changeable here that one end of the worm can experience very different temperatures to the other end. They also have no eyes, no stomach, and no anus. So they somehow feed off the nutrients of the mud volcanoes, although so far scientists have been unable to determine how. The leading theory is that they harness the methane gas or the hydrogen sulfide that's in the water and through a process called chemosynthesis, they are able to create a chemical reaction that releases electrons and therefore produces energy. Number five, Loihi Shrimp. The seabed around Guam is a volcanically active place and there's one volcano that's particularly lively and teeming with life. Studies between 2004 and 2006 found that the volcano had built a new cone that was 131 feet high and 984 feet wide, which is about the same as a 12-story tall city block. The nutrients that are released here are ideal for various species, such as shrimp, crabs, limpets, and barnacles, including some that are completely new to science. One of these, the Loihi shrimp, is specifically adapted for this environment. It has tiny claws that are like garden shears, which allow it to harvest the bacterial filaments that coat the rock in the heat and chemical-rich waters. There's another unnamed shrimp species too, that's adapted with large claws to prey on the animals that are unlucky enough to get caught within bursts of volcanic activity. Dying fish, squid, and other species rain down on the seafloor, and these predator shrimps swim straight in to take advantage of their remains. Number four, megapode birds. In New Guinea, there's a species of bird that actually needs the specialized environment around a volcano to breed. Known as megapodes, they are similar to chickens with a small head and large feet, and their name comes from the Greek meaning large foot. Unlike other birds which use their body heat to incubate their eggs, megapodes bury their eggs within the ground and use volcanic heat to help them hatch. They are the only known birds to do so. This alternative way of incubation means that their eggs are structured differently and at least 50 to 70% of their weight is the yolk. Various species of megapode live across Australasia and the Pacific Islands, but since humans have arrived in the area, populations have severely declined and are in many cases highly endangered and at risk of extinction. Number three, Archaea. A study in 2012 that performed DNA analysis on rocky soils around the volcanoes of South America found evidence of a number of different species of bacteria, fungi, and various other simple organisms called archaea. Archaea are found around the world, but these ones have adapted to be very different from their cousins. Their DNA was found to be at least 5% different to anything else in the DNA database of over 2.5 million strands because they have had to develop a different way to convert energy than is used by other microbes. The environment on the tallest volcanoes of the Atacama region is particularly harsh, with soil that's so depleted that nitrogen levels were beneath what instruments are able to detect. The high altitude means that ultraviolet radiation is twice as much as in low elevations, and temperatures range between 14 degrees Fahrenheit and 133 degrees Fahrenheit, all of which makes it difficult for anything to survive here. It's thought that the Archaea are able to make it by extracting energy from chemical reactions that make use of the wisps of gases such as carbon dioxide and dimethyl sulfide that blow through the region. While this wouldn't be enough to give a high energy yield, over time it would build up and allow them to live. Number 2. Thermus aquaticus Sitting above a supervolcano, the bubbling hot springs of Yellowstone can reach temperatures in excess of 194 degrees Fahrenheit and are way too inhospitable for most organisms to survive. Researchers have found one microbe that flourishes in this environment though, called Thermus aquaticus. The microbe contains a heat-tolerant DNA polymerizing enzyme that allows them to generate energy to survive and gives them vivid colors that are the reason the springs look the way that they do. This enzyme has been crucial to DNA analysis since they were first discovered in 1969 and enables DNA samples to be amplified for analysis, which is vital for crime scene analysis and genome reading. Number one, sharks. If undersea volcanoes weren't dangerous enough, a team of researchers investigating the Kavachi volcano near the Solomon Islands found some of the ocean's deadliest predators living within the main peak. 
Footage taken by undersea rovers showed hammerhead sharks and silky sharks living inside and seemingly unaffected by the harsh heat and acidic environment. They were gathered together in large numbers, which the researchers think was because of the other creatures that were there, such as jellies, snappers, and small fish. With such a variety of prey for the sharks to feed on, it seemed only natural that they have moved in to take advantage of it. The volcano last erupted in 2014, and despite the sharks living there, it would be impossible for them to survive during an eruption. This raises questions about how they know when to leave, and whether they even leave at all, with some scientists thinking the species of shark that live here have actually mutated to be able to cope with the acidic and cloudy environment, and swoop in as soon as the volcanic activity has calmed down. Thanks for watching! Were you surprised by any of these? Do you enjoy my nasally voice? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you are new here. We have lots of new videos coming up. See you soon! Bye!